Hey there, Foxy Gamers! With Overwatch Season 2 just around the corner, I figured I would take some time to talk with you about it. First of all, I don't claim to be any super awesome player. I'm not even going to tell you guys what my rank for Season 1 has been for the most part. Partially because I think, in its current state, the ranks are complete bullshit, but also, I'm just really not that good of a player. That being said, I'm super excited for the changes coming to Season 2 because I think it's just going to make it a lot more fun and a lot more fair for everybody, especially players like me, who do a lot of solo queuing and who play a lot of supports. And I, I got kind of shat on the beginning of the season for playing healers and losing so much rank and then not gaining any rank when I was winning that I never really quite came back from that. Anyway, the main thing I am excited about is no more sudden death! Woohoo! I'm super stoked about that because the number of times I have lost a game to a bad coin toss is definitely higher than the number of times I have won a game to a lucky coin toss. And I mean, even when I have won a game with it, it still just felt dirty and I felt really bad for the other team because I'm an empathetic person and I do care about others. So there will be no more sudden death, no more coin toss. And it sounds like Blizzard has a pretty good way to get around this. Obviously, the King of the Hill maps aren't going to see any change there because it was already best three out of five anyway, and never had any coin toss for those. For the control point maps, the way it is right now is if you capture a point with less than two minutes remaining, you will automatically gain two minutes to try and capture a point again should the game go into the next round. Now the thing that really annoyed me about that so far is that I could be on a team that captured both points with, say, two and a half minutes remaining, and the other team captured both points with zero time remaining, they got it in overtime or something, yet they still get to try to capture another point in approximately the same amount of time that we got. And that, that would always make me mad that they would just get two free minutes and my team wouldn't. And I swear it never happened to me. I never got to be the team that got extra time when the other one didn't. So now the way it'll work is that you only get one up to one minute of bonus time and however much time extra the lower team got, uh, it will also be added to the other team. So if your team captured the point with 10 seconds to spare, then you get up to a minute for the next point. So you get 50 extra seconds. And that means the other team will get 50 extra seconds in addition to whatever time they had left to try to capture the next point anyway. And I think that is completely and totally legit. I think that's a great change. Another awesome one is the payload. If you finish escorting the payload and you have four minutes to spare, and then the other team goes and they finish the payload with 10 seconds to spare, obviously your team did a much better job but they still get just as much of a chance at the coin toss and they can still get lucky and win the game just by default of the coin toss unless they're just, you know, really terrible and if that's the case they deserve to lose anyway. But the way it's gonna work now is if you finish the payload and you have three minutes to spare or whatever, then you get to try to go a second round in with that remaining time that you have and so if you say get one and a half payload maps then the other team is going to have to get one and a half as well and if they don't then you automatically win so this is kind of their way of uh getting around ties by taking away sudden death uh because they don't want to have ties in a game nobody really likes to tie but it, it will still happen occasionally like if you're on a hybrid map and nobody captures the first point instead of going in this, into sudden death that's just gonna end on a tie the good news is both teams will get a little bit of payoff for the time that they put into the match so both teams will walk away with a small amount of competitive points and a small amount of rating increase Obviously, that's going to affect the balance of overall rating a little bit, but hey, as it stands right now, rating is from 1 to 100 anyway, and I don't think there's anybody with a rating of 
higher than, I don't know what, maybe 80 or something. So I think that will work out perfectly fine. Speaking of which, now the ranking numbers are going to be taken away and instead they're going to be replaced with metal tiers, kind of like, well, I suppose it's like this in Heroes of the Storm too, but I'm most familiar with uh, StarCraft 2 because that was honestly the last uh, Blizzard game I played competitively. And so it's going to be like that where you have bronze, silver, gold, platinum, uh, diamond, master, and grandmaster. And within those tiers, then you will have a skill rating. And this is better because you're going to stay within a league, like you can go up and down within the same league. It's not gonna feel as bad if you lose a few matches one night because you can come back the next night and win some more and you're, you're gonna stay in the same league. And you will never drop out of a league during a season unless you are in the top two tiers because they, need to be a bit more competitive and that would be kind of silly if a whole bunch of people could get to Grandmaster and then no matter how much better other Grandmasters were, they, they never fell out of Grandmaster. So that makes pretty good sense to me. It will remain similar to the brackets now uh, for the amount of competitive points that you get at the end of a season. So if your highest league was a gold league, then you will get the same amount of points as everybody else whose highest league was Gold League. Also, the competitive points awarded will be multiplied by 10, and that's including for the end of Season 1, which also means the items will cost 10 times as much. And the reason they're doing this is so that they can do stuff like award small amounts of competitive points for ties and maybe even like a few sympathy points or one sympathy point for a loss. I'm not sure, but it's possible. So anyway, that kind of covers the main changes that are gonna happen in the next season. And for the most part, I am extremely happy about all these changes because they were some of the most frustrating things that I had to face uh, this season. And the only thing I really wish that they would change, which they may or may not do this soon, but they didn't actually talk about this recently. I would like it if when you join a match and you know how you see everybody's rankings next to their names, and then there's a team average also, I would really like it if you couldn't see anybody else's ratings until the end of a match and all you saw was the overall team rating because the number of times where I've seen games where uh, the person with the lowest ranking, if they're like one or two points below everybody else and everyone else has like the same rating and, and they lose the game, often that person with the lowest ranking will get blamed and they're not necessarily the worst player on the team they've just had a string of bad luck or something and and the skill rating doesn't really mean that much i've also seen the opposite end of that where somebody who has a higher rating than most of the team will yell at everybody else if, if anybody requests that person to not play the hero they picked or to play a specific hero because it'd be good for the team, that person will be like, you guys need to shut the hell up because I'm a higher ranking than you, so therefore I'm better and I know what I'm doing. So I would really, really like it if they made everybody's ratings invisible until like the end of a game, like, you know, when, when the card screen comes up, then you could see what the ratings were just in case you were curious. Or, you know, you can always look at the, the recently played with people and you can, if you really want to know what the rating is, you can go click on their career profile and see for yourself. And I just think that would be a much better way to do it. Or if they could allow players the option of making their rating private, kind of like uh, Dota 2 did. I don't know if they still do. I haven't played in about a year, but anyway, that's just my opinion. And that's the, the one main thing that I would like to see them add to competitive sometime. Thanks a lot guys for listening to me talk about these changes and, and allowing me to share with you my feelings on all of this. Feel free to comment below if you agree or disagree or have other ideas that you would like to see them add too. Thanks a lot guys, and I'll see you next time. Take care.